Hello, I'm Dr. Rajesh Jain. I'm working as a specialist orthopedic surgeon in Halle Hospital, Hamdan. Today, I'm going to talk about back pain. If you have got one and want to know what's causing yours, stay tuned because I'm going to talk about it right now. According to the statistics, 50 to 60 percent of the world's population suffers from back pain at least once or twice in their lifetime. Though most people take care of their backs, it is one of the second most common reasons why people visit the hospitals and it's a leading cause of disability worldwide. Most of the times, the severity of the back pain does not relate to the seriousness of the pathology underlying the cause. In most of the cases, the patients get well on their own with home remedy and self-care. Back pain can present as pain anywhere in the neck, upper back, lower back or tailbone reason. Depending upon the duration, the back pain can be acute or chronic. Acute pain starts suddenly and can last for 3 to 6 weeks and any pain which persists for more than 6 weeks is, can be considered as chronic. Human back is made up of complex structures like muscles, ligaments, tendons, discs and joints which all together support the back and any injury or inflammation to any of these components can cause back pain. Back pain can present as a muzzle ache, stabbing or shooting sensation. In addition to that, the pain can radiate down to one or both the legs which can get aggravated with bending, standing, lifting weights or walking. In that case, it can be called as sciatica. So now the question arises, when should you be seeing a doctor? It is when you have tried all the home remedies and self-care. In spite of that, you have still have persistent back pain. The pain is radiating down to one or both the legs. If you have tingling numbness in one or both the legs, in rare cases, back pain can present as a serious medical problem and you must seek an immediate medical attention. This happens when the back pain is associated with sudden change in bowel and bladder movements, associated with tingling numbness in the rectal area or the perineal area. The another scenario is when the back pain is present with a high grade temperature. In addition to a low immunity status, we need to suspect and infection and it should be treated accordingly. In another scenario wherein back pain follows a trivial fall or an accident, we might need to suspect fracture. This usually happens in elderly people because the bones are weak and the osteoporosis might be the cause. In another rare case, when back pain is constant, not relieved by rest, the pain gets more in the night. In addition, the patient has a sudden loss of weight over a short period of time we might need to suspect as a malignancy or commonly we call it cancer as a, as a cause. Nobody is immune to back pain. Anybody can develop it, including children and teens. There are many factors which put you at a higher risk of having back pain. Like as you grow older, the risk becomes more. If you are overweight, extra load puts an increased pressure over the back which can lead to back pain. If you do not exercise, the unused and weak muscles do not support the back and they can lead to back pain. Improper lifting of objects can also lead to back pain if you lift them with your back in bent position. Certain psychological condition wherein people are prone to depression and anxiety, they are at high risk for having back pain. In addition to this, smoking also causes increased risk for back pain because smoking prompts coughing which can cause herniated discs. In addition to this, Smoking reduces the blood supply to the spine and it can cause osteoporosis which can indirectly lead to fractures of the spine. There is no sure way of preventing the back pain but taking few steps in your day-to-day -day life can reduce the risk of back pain like exercising regularly. Increases the strength and endurance of the back and helps your back muscles function better. In addition to this, doing abdominal and spinal exercises increases the core and it acts as a natural corset for your back. Maintaining a healthy weight reduces the load on the spine which in, indirectly uh, reduces the incidence of back pain in those individuals. Quitting smoking also helps in reducing the back pain. In addition to this, avoiding awkward movements of the back, bending, twisting, it also helps in reducing the back pain. Stand smart. What do you mean by stand smart? If you have to stand for long, long hours, keep one foot over a footstool.
to offload the load on from the back standing in good posture can reduce the stress on the back muscles sit smart means when you are sitting choose a chair with a good back support put a towel or a pillow in the uh, small of the back while sitting keep the knees and hips at the same level lift smart means if you have to lift a weight keep your back straight bend on your knees and hips keep the weight close to your body and pick it up if the weight is heavy ask for help after this awareness talk if you still have some doubts please feel free to call us we are just a phone call away we have a very good dedicated team of orthopedic surgeons and a physiotherapy department who can assist you in diagnosing and treating your back pain thank you